And so singing is a wonderful way to do one thing, is to fill up with this God essence. So, you know, all the mystics in this world from all the traditions, if you look it up, if you search a little bit, you will find they all, when they had the encounter with God as God essence, they described the God essence as milk substance. And that was the story that I shared from my <laughs> encounter with our beauty, with our beloved, with our father, when he came. And I know that he comes to all of us in every moment. It's like he is here, available in every moment. And it is only our own choice, actually, to fill up or not, or to be partially filled up or fully filled up. So there is no such thing as like judgment, like you deserve me, you, do, you don't deserve me. It is all us. Thank you, Angela, the whipped cream of God. And so I'm going to read a little bit from Sufi traditions when they describe the experiences when they had with God. And another way to see it, it is really an incredible, incredible experience to be filled up like this, to every day do something to fill up 100%. It doesn't matter how you fill up as long as you fill up. And so um, I subscribed a long time ago to a newsletter. I'm not subscribed to many things, but this is Hillary and Brad Keeney. And these mystics traveled in Africa to an African tribe of the Sun people who do a very special process, you know, they are like the bush people, right? But they know how to fill up with God essence. And so Hillary and her husband, Brad Keeney, if anyone can find it, I recommend subscribing to their newsletter. They are great mystics. And they learned by the, from the sun people in Africa how to connect with God essence. And so in the newsletter, they have beautiful long newsletters where they share, you know, the different experiences that mystics from all traditions are having with this God essence. And so they all describe it as milk, milky white substance. And so again, you know, when I was presenting at the World Congress in Illumination, I filled up a glass with whipped cream just so that we see it visually every day. How can we fill up every day with this milky white substance? So here is, for example, a story about Brad Keeney that his wife shared. So I'm going to read it. Brad once dreamed that Jesus handed him a glass of glowing white light. And when he drank it, his body was filled with an indescribable fire. On another occasion, while awake, Brad felt the same warm fluid. It was more like milk. And it poured over the top of his brain. And then it flowed slowly and surely down the rest of his body, all the way to the tips of his toes. And so another mystic from uh, the Sufi tradition wrote, it's just a little paragraph from a book. I looked up and saw the clear heavens and it looked milkish. And I said, Lord, what is this? And he said, it is love. And then a shower of rain came down on the top of my head and went to the toes. And I was light. I was light as a feather. I was filled with milky substance. Suddenly I had a long white robe and I was just floating. Thank you, money. That's exactly who they are. Another, <laughs> I just want to say, you know, it's amazing. It's just amazing what it is, right? <laughs> so... <clears throat> Here is some uh, pastor, some um, here. The universal tide of this white light flowed in upon me in waves of joy and gladness, pouring down on me in torrents of fragrant balm. The infinite love and tenderness seemed to really stream down me like holy oil healing all my hurts and bruises. So that was just a few. They actually, the newsletters are usually filled with all these amazing experiences. And so it really does happen. And I had this amazing experience. I keep sharing it because to me it's the most important thing. And please know, I just want to always say, I know it might to some of you be annoying. I'm sharing all these experiences, 
but I never ever share them to point at me. I always share everything to actually offer to you how amazing you are, how we are all exactly wired the same way, how we can all receive these, you know, amazing, you know, face-to-face encounters. And I know that for me, you know, mm, I started having them when I was a little kid, but we are all wired the same way. And so thank you. Thank you. I just always want to point at you and your divine self, you and your divine connection to empower everyone to keep going. You don't need to be perfect in any way. We don't need to deserve this, you know. And I wanted to, again, share my experience with Divine Father because one thing that really, you know, I wrote it down, of course, like in my journal the next day. (laughs) And I know you guys remember I had the skunk problem here. So the house was filled with this awful, awful smell. It was overwhelming. And for some reason, I was wondering, can a skunk juice really help you have this divine experience? (laughs) so i i want to say one thing i'm gonna just look into my journal because um i sometimes write things down and sometimes i don't but um one thing that was really important was that here i felt everyone's unique gift God showed me every single one of us in this world and showed me how much he loves us. Every single one of us. The feeling was so moving. My joy was very emotional. I could not stop my tears of joy, the love and adoration. I felt like God just adores every single one of us so much, no matter what. All of us are perfect in the eyes of God. And I just thought it was so amazing to know because sometimes we forget how loved we are. Sometimes we don't even know it, you know? And so (laughs) I just want to say every moment in your life, you know, fill up with God essence, sing a song, dance, you know, drink a cup of tea, enjoy yourself, you know? It doesn't matter how you do it. There is no judgment about anything. It doesn't have to be a certain way. It is just about the result, which is let's fill up. And so I'm going to share a few things. So tonight we're going to have the beautiful full moon rising. This is our last super moon of this year. So for some of us, it will be most of us, I guess, right after midnight, kind of early morning in Europe, it's going to be even more of your morning. So it's nice to connect with these cycles of the earth. And I you know, was able to, I, I arrived from Texas yesterday, so I wanted to share a little bit of what happened to, in Texas, <laughs> yeah, it was my daughter's birthday, and so, um, you know, I always recommend when you are on a flight, especially longer flights, you know, get a nice eye mask, and actually, I found one that I really love, so I'm gonna make a note that I'm gonna send an email with a few things that I said I would, but I didn't, but I'm gonna include an eye mask, which I found, I've tried many different eye masks because it's really nice to be completely in darkness. As you know, for example, from Taoist practices, there is a practice where you meditate in complete darkness. And the reason for that is that your third eye simply opens better, your pineal gland activates better. And so when I'm on the plane, I put on my eye mask. Now that I found the most perfect one, you go into complete ether. You just start seeing through your third eye as you focus on your third eye and then listening to your meditations. And so, you know, having, you know, your ear pods, I think it's called, and just going for it, whether it is brainwaves or Orin or Daben, it doesn't matter, whatever you love, just do that. And allow yourself to completely take your journey as your spiritual journey while being away from the human energy and being up in the ethers. So, you know, it's very nice. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And so we are in the body of the great mother. It's amazing that scientists today are finding that actually we are part of apparently 11 dimensions. And I would agree with them that we actually do have 11 dimensions where we can go and explore our own being. But we also have the 12th dimension. And the 12th dimension is where we merge with God. We become one with this. We no longer have an individualized body. 
but in all 11 dimensions. And I think, you know, it was uh, recently that scientists and even you can read about it, they they believe, you know, it's all theories, but I want to say as mystics, we want to have gnosis. We want to really have experience of it. And uh, I find experience through meditation is the most reliable experience. So scientists now believe that we have 11 dimensions and that, that's exciting. And so um, in all of these dimensions, we have to have a body to be able to experience. In a 12 dimension, we become one with this beautiful milky substance, which actually is a tree of life. And so in these cosmic, I kind of lost my train of thought, but that's okay. I'll just say something. <laughs> and so this cosmic mother with all her dimensions, with all her realms, with, with all her parallel realities, with all her worlds, it's a big being to explore. And again, we want to explore, but you know, we don't want to figure it all out. We just want to live well within it, meaning we want to be kind of having fun and being in love. That's kind of the idea here beyond creation originally to be able to be constantly in adoration, to be grateful for this amazing opportunity to create. And we do have so many, well, those dimensions that I mentioned, we have dimensions. Within each dimension, you have many different realms. And within many different realms, you also have many different worlds. And all of this can be explored when we meditate. All of this, and this is what we share here, how to do it and to do it well. So I'm gonna share a little bit how to do it. So for a cosmos to actually work in a kind of organized way, because we do have room for chaos and we do have room for organization, we do need a little bit of patterns and then we need a little bit of experimentation. Experimentation is a little bit of chaos that eventually organizes itself. So Divine Mother likes to, you know, explode here and there and see what happens. And then comes the point of organization and organization is our architecture. So eventually things organize into cosmic cycles and then smaller universal cycles, then galactic cycles, and then we have our solar cycles, then we have lunar cycles, and we have planetary cycles, and then we have our own individual cycles. So that's a lot of cycles, a lot of cycles. And these cycles are aligned with each other. And now and again, they align perfectly, which gives us the opportunity for an incredible shift. Now, the way the Divine Mother explained this to me a while ago is that when you think about it as if each cycle was a keyhole and the keyholes are simply floating through cosmos, but now and again, the cycles or the keyholes, keyholes, they come together and they align as if you could suddenly put one key through all of them and unlock the potential of cosmos for all life. And that is exactly what we are going through and building up for, because the alignments actually is something that our ancient people always wanted to know. When is it? And to me, it's like being a farmer, right? So, you know, my, my grandparents had a farm, so I knew that they had to know when to plant a seed. Like, I mean, that's the key knowledge to have, right? You cannot plant a seed of something in fall that needs to be planted in spring. And so that's exactly what's happening here on planet Earth. That's why we are doing this work. You know, this work is done through us. We are the ones who unlock the potential within. We unlock the potential within the Earth. We connect with all that is so that we can become once again cosmic beings. Now, cosmic beings, it's more fun. It is so much more fun when we are actually in our cosmic consciousness because then nothing is really a big deal. We start walking on water. We become a little bit more magical. Well, much more magical. And so that's why our ancient people always followed these ancient cycles that always have been in cosmos. They track them, right? Because they wanted to know when is the time to plant your seed? When is the time when the blossoming comes? When is the time for transcendence? And so that's why we do that. And so here is something that is happening within the ether right now. I always share how to open your third eye to do it just so that we can see into the ethers. For example, you know, when you don't sleep at night, that's the best time to open your third eye. While you lay in bed, lay on your back, 
because we want the spinal cord and your nervous system to be perfectly aligned. And I will keep sharing more and more and more of how to do this. And, you know, we'll just help everyone to get to this place. And so you can, you can now see in the ethers. I, I found this picture from Josephine Wall. Josephine Wall is wonderful. And actually, I wish that Divine Mother was depicted like a black woman. Because, and I don't. I, I always say, please forgive me if I'm not politically correct, but dark skinned woman. So, you know, that would be more actually appropriate because here our Gaia, as she is in our world that we are an expression of, is actually a dark skinned woman. And so that would be more, you know, the way that it is. And that is because the earth herself is actually a planet of giving an expression to her beings in certain tones of darker skin, whether it is what today we would call Asian or African or South American and so on and so on. And so this is what you see in the ethers. Divine Mother and Divine Father are united within the ethers of the earth. And you can see also the amazing energies that are flowing into the earth. I was able to watch this last night. And so when you open your third eye, you want to be on your back, you want to be relaxing, you want to be breathing deeply and slowly through your spine, always through the spine, focusing really on your third eye, just on that one point and keep practicing. It becomes your new nature and we all will be looking through the third eye and we just look into the ethers and we just focus on the third eye. We become completely thoughtless. That's, of course, you know, one of the th conditions is to disconnect from all thought. And if you do have thought, simply replace the thought with something like, I am that I am, I am that I am, or OM. So, <laughs> for this, you know, I had a little break because I went to Texas to be with my daughter, but so much happened. I feel like this event would be like three hours if I shared everything. So I'll try to do my best. And so let's take a look at it. So I try to do this every night, you know, so let's say you wake up because the energies are transforming the earth into her beautiful cosmic higher self that has a name in cosmos and that is Maravati. And so very often, you know, you when you go to cosmic realms, you will start hearing the language of cosmos. And there are many different languages, of course, but very often if it is a sound, it will be a sound of very simple syllables. And so Maravati is what in cosmic terms is the new earth. And so again, I will post the music that we co-created so that you can just download it from the website. I will link it in the email as well so that everyone can download it and you can empower it. You know that we have been working also on how to create a beautiful video for the alignment of the access. And so I wanted to deeply thank everyone for all your contributions for your incredible generosity i'm moved every day i'm trying to send everyone a personal message i'm working on it every single day just a few messages every day just so that you know i so much appreciate your love and i know this is not for me this is for the world and so you you know are truly incredibly contributing to something so beautiful and so the artist is here in California. He's working on it every day. He started, I think, on the 19th of September. It will take him about two months. The goal is to actually be ready by 11.11. So we will have it for 11.11. And also we will possibly add something really special, which will be a surprise. But again, I'm working on that. So thank you. Thank you. And so I want to say, this is now moving through us. This is life force moving through us magic is happening here and i know that today is you know at night at the full moon but you know maybe we will do another event because there's so much changing and i want you to guys have the tools so that you can create the life that you deserved internally you know we all came here to have a beautiful life suffering and pain was a distortion and it was the distortion of the lower frequencies that kept us trapped in our first, second, and the third chakra. They kept us disconnected from the rising into the heart. But now it's time to rise in the heart and make the heart the captain of this reality. 
And so what is happening? Oh my gosh, what's happening? First of all, I wanted to show this other beautiful painting. Uh, I bought this for my husband when you know I first encountered this amazing, beautiful spirit, but he was the first one who started to play the didgeridoo and we were just feeling the spirit coming in 2020. And so I found this in Australia. And this is pretty much how the Australian Aboriginals, you know, were able to perceive the rainbow serpent, right? And they were simple, simply able to see her. She was moving, moving in the water waves. The Zuni people here in the United States, they even said the rainbow serpent saved them at the end of Atlantis. And she showed them the way to the new land. I mean, it's incredible. So, you know, we are becoming familiar with the mother, with the mother energy as the rainbow serpent. Mm -hmm. It does look exactly like the two trumpets. So this is very, very powerful. The two trumpets are so fundamental to our reality. I took this picture from NASA this morning. I found it on NASA. NASA now also realizes, of course, you know, it's all theory that we do have a multiverse and that we have many, 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 many universes. They even believe now that we have infinite number of universes. And I would say that is pretty much close to what I believe is true. So one day I was able to go out of body and I was able to get outside of our universe. And when I got outside of our universe, I was able to see this. Our universe looks like the two trumpets of creation, like these two loops. And they have all these pictures now on NASA of this multiverse of the two trumpets. Now, as mystics, we recognize this also as the tree of life, don't we? We realize that one side is the crown, then we have the trunk, and then we also have the roots. That is the design of all things. And I always say even cosmos is the same design. And I was able to see cosmos from the 11th dimension. <laughs> I, was, I was telling my husband yesterday, I said, I sound like I'm doing, you know, psychedelics. But I, this is through meditation, through Yogananda's guidance, you know. This is just Yogananda's guidance. And to me, you know, I think Yogananda, I actually was listening to some guru yesterday um, who was saying, you know, his disciples gave him like some psychedelics one day. And he said to them, I see no difference between psychedelics and true divine reality. It's the same thing. You just explore it differently. Instead of having kind of some random experience, you build up to it. You meditate to it. You find your path to it. You understand it because you build your ladder. You build your tree of life to be able to go out of body or to be able to travel in your light body. So also you will see that this is the design of creation, the two trumpets of creation. And so what does it mean for us? Why is this so important? Well, we are designed the same way. We too are a tree of life. We too have roots, trunk and crown. When we embody our tree of life fully and completely, when we get to know ourselves, we realize we are beings of cosmic nature. And then we stop swinging from the crown to the roots saying the crown is better, the roots are not so nice. We actually become whole again and we center ourselves in Christ's consciousness within us, in our love, in our heart. We become whole. We don't disconnect the roots from the crown. We embody both equally. And it's not that we are evil at all. That was the distorted reality here, right? It became distorted here because suddenly somebody said, oh, it's better to be in the crown than it is in the roots. But actually, it's an important practice. <laughs> I just want to inhale here. <laughs> and so um, I had a very cool experience at my daughter's place. Mm, so I couldn't sleep at all. And I just want to put it into perspective. You know, I sometimes share these stories just to put it into perspective how things are. I don't know which picture to share, but let me just put it here like this. So <clears throat> Texas, a little hot, a little too hot for me, by the way. And so they have AC running all night. I'm not used to AC, plus it is loud. So I just couldn't sleep at all. So it's good. That's why I tell the story. So that if you are in a place where you simply cannot sleep, do a practice. 
<laughs> yeah so I was like okay I'm just gonna meditate so I you know did my thing I had my pillow I brought with me which is the pillow that I use to be able to travel out of body so I'm laying on my back I'm focusing on the third eye I'm silencing the mind I'm using different chants so usually I do om but then I thought you know I'm gonna do I am that I am because I experience in the presence of this amazing substance and the white milky light of God you as a being will say nothing except for and it happens automatically you start speaking automatically to god and you say nothing except i am that i am i am that i am i am that i am and i do believe that's where it comes from because something within us is wired for our divinity to only say that to god i am that i am and so when i had this experience on 8 8 my being just kept repeating it. And so I thought, okay, now I know the power of it. Okay, so it brings up this amazing God essence within us. So I'm laying there in bed, you know, middle of the night. And the room was completely dark, which was very nice because it's very nice to be in complete darkness. And I put on Orin. I thought, you know what? I'm going to listen to Orin because what else am I going to do? I'm awake. And so I was listening to the... Um, fifth album which is the interdimensional travel and so it's playing now as it was playing obviously you have to hear right you are listening you're using a sense one of the five senses is hearing now from my experiences which really kriya yoga taught me to travel out of body i actually have to disconnect from all senses from all five senses to be able to disconnect from body consciousness and to be able to go to higher realms and i do believe that's you know exactly what kriya yoga was designed to do and so i'm able to do it at night better than during the day and so i lay there and i'm listening at the same time i'm starting to come out of body but one sense is holding me back. Now, this was a fundamental experience I wanted to actually share because we have to question our reality. So I feel like a scientist who is exploring our higher dimensions and our actual reality this way. And so I'm starting to come out of body. So I know my process, you know, the arms peel, the legs peel, and then you kind of roll out whatever way you do it. But the thing is that I still had Orin playing on my phone next to me. So even though I came out of body, one sense was holding me back and I was unable to move into higher realms because I was held back by hearing. Now, if you have been out of body and you know how this works, you don't want to kind of disrupt your process. So I didn't want to suddenly go back in the body so that I can turn off the phone because I thought, man, what if I cannot do it after that? So I laid next to my physical body, out of body. So two bodies next to each other, listening to Oren, not wanting to go back in, but also not being able to move to a higher realm. And I realized that sense of hearing is holding me back here, tied to this earthly plane unable to move completely out and of course that is the breakthrough we should question the five senses are keeping us attached to the earthly plane without the actually even possibility of moving out as long as we are hearing seeing sensing smelling feeling right Tasting, I guess, the, is the other one. So uh, tasting, which is not a problem at night. But think about it. Gerge. <laughs> the five senses. If we have life force sustaining one sense, then we cannot move out to a higher realm. This was for me, I've never experienced anything like it because I never listen to anything at night when I'm, you know, at home next to my husband. I don't want to disturb his peace. So I usually do it in complete silence. And so this showed me that as long as life force is sustaining one sense, we are attached to this realm. But when we can completely be in silence, 
in complete darkness, not seeing, not hearing, not sensing, you know, when we can completely be in nothingness, nothingness of the five senses, then our being can freely be taken by the flow of higher dimensional energies into higher realms. So the funny thing is, yes, thank you. It is so incredible. So I was questioning, so who is here really? Who is in this body perceiving reality? When I disconnect all five senses, which is normally what I do, then I'm able to hop into the flow of higher consciousness and it takes me to higher realms. It's like a river. It takes you. You as a human cease to exist and you are only a super conscious self. So tell me if that is not puzzling, that a sense is holding us in this reality. I mean, to me, it was like, oh my gosh, it's all the teachings of all the great gurus of all... Like, I want to say, please experiment. It's not difficult. It's just practice. I just practice, practice, practice until bam, you know, you go out. So, yeah, wonderful. So whoever teaches us whatever way they do, practice. It's just practice. So as I was disconnected from seeing, I was able to use my out-of-body body my super conscious body that was laying on the bed next to my physical body, I was able to see into higher realms. And so I was able to see what's going on here, how this energy is now inviting us to move with her. But my hearing was stuck. <laughs> I mean, it was so funny. So like, oh my gosh. So who is here perceiving this reality? When we disconnect, is, is that like going into samadhi? You kind of check out from here, you know? And that is our true self. I find my true self not to be this person here at all in any way. I know this is not my true self. This is not you. You know, when we look in the mirror, it is really deceiving. You are not the person in the mirror. But once we come out of body, for example, you get to see yourself, you get to see your light, you get to see how vast you are, you get to hop into this river that is happening here, filling up with this people call it plasma, you know, and so this is what's happening here, our physical bodies are changing also, of course, our senses are changing. And so I wanted to actually go to this slide here. So this is like a big deal here that's happening on planet Earth. Let me see if anything here that I had is a big deal. No, I'm just going to put it like this so that we can see it. Actually, I'm not going to because then when I uh, put it on YouTube, I have to <laughs> edit it differently. So if you don't mind, I'll have it like this. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's really about disconnecting from all senses and my question is if you stop seeing if you stop hearing if you stop smelling if you stop feeling if you stop tasting then what is left for us here to perceive this reality and who would be perceiving it who would be here to perceive anything if they couldn't perceive anything through the five senses big question would anyone be here or would we be all only in our consciousness, you know? So I was able to at least explore the higher realms through my seeing into the higher realms. And so I learned two things I wanted to actually show. So this beautiful rainbow light is now visible, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good to ask, what is the matrix? How does it work? Why the five senses? And why the... Why, <laughs> yeah, and why, why the yogis were always teaching detachment? The five senses are an amazing experience if they are used in freedom, freedom, complete freedom as an amazing tool. It's like being in a video game, and that's your you know it's it's your tools in the video game to experience the video game through the five senses because without the five senses the video game ceases to actually exist 
but what if we are completely free in nothingness you know it's it's a very funny game here but anyway so divine mother was able to at least show me that actually what's happening here on planet earth now is our ability to create differently differently than we have created in the last many thousands of years so she said this to me she showed me this she is a magnetic force she is like a magnetic serpent that's why actually the serpent is going in the sinus wave it's magnetism and so we are like walking magnets some have a lot of magnetism some not so much I recommend again doing Qigong and we will do some Qigong practice here together. I wanted to introduce you to two beautiful exercises from Qigong uh, that I also put in the email that I sent because I, you know, I practice now every day, but the thing is it builds up your magnetism so much. You become liberated from distorted patterns. You become a beautiful magnet and a beautiful magnet is then drawing beautiful things from the ethers, from the infinity, from, you know, the miracle field. And so Divine Mother showed me something amazing. She said, she showed that she is the coil around us, the magnetic coil. And so, you know, she is love. Only love is really the magnetic coil around us. When we become all love, which is Christ consciousness. I mean, these are big revelations. You know, I'm saying it in simple words. I don't want to say anything really that doesn't come from self-realization because it wouldn't have the power. I don't want to repeat empty things that I haven't experienced because otherwise it would not be a transmission. And so this is an energetic always transmission of energy, of experience, of gnosis, you know, personal experience. And so, or direct experience, let's put it that way. <laughs> There's no person here. And so the magnetic force around us is built through love. Love. It all comes back to love. How much we love life how much we love creation how much we love the divine self within not the personality self but even the personality self we can shower that one with love too and so when we show love to divine mother when we show love to the world that she is she is the world we have to remember she's not just the person she can be if she wants to she can be a person she can be this and again, I just wanted to show this picture of Lakshmi from Ananda Vdovich. Just so that you know, when you reach out to Ananda, she told me some of you reached out. Her paintings are about 40,000 euros and some of them are like millions of dollars. So, you know, just so that you know, but you can buy them as prints on her Fine Art America account, which is wonderful. And so Divine Mother can manifest herself as a being like this. She always is a cosmic being, but she can take on whatever form she wants. And actually, this is how she appeared to Ananda. And she stood in front of her for many, many days, every single day. And she let her paint her. She even asked her to paint her. And she always says, I'm here, paint me. And then when she was done, she was done. Every day, she was like, okay, I'm leaving. We are done for today. That's an amazing story. And so Divine Mother can be this. And she wanted to be surrounded by angels. She wanted to have angels in her field. I think this is amazing. So to me, this is the one I recommend also getting from Fine Art America as a print. This one with the angels. Because this is where the Divine Mother stood in front of her. That is a transmission. You know, that's the transmission, the real deal. When the Mother stands in front of you. And so she is that but she also is cosmos. When we are love, cosmos reflects back to us love. And again, I think I'm, I wanted to say something else, but you know, it just comes to me like a river. So it's okay. I will just keep on going. So she is a world. That's what I wanted to say. She is a world. She always is the world, the cosmic world. It's so huge. It's incomprehensible for the human brain. But that's why we can only explore it through our expansion of consciousness into being one with her. But in this world, she too is the world. 
In the Pleiades, she is the world. In the solar system, she is the world. In this universe, she is the world. In cosmos, she is the world. And she is an amazing, amazing creator. But she uses the five elements. Maybe not uses, but she is the five elements. The mother sound is Om. The pillow I'm still working on. I'm, I'm testing different pillows. They have to be perfect. I want the perfect one. And so you can think, and I put it as a, you know, a kind of exercise into the email. When you look at your life, we start with that. We look 360 degrees. That means we look also behind, <laughs> which we, we look at all things at once. And we say, I am that. But if I shift my energy to be something else, that's what Divine Mother always says. She says, shape shift. If you want any kind of healing in life, shape shift. If we don't shape shift, the reflection in the mirror will have to remain the same as it was before. We cannot stay the same and yet see something else in the mirror that she is. Divine Mother always works with those five elements. And so the five elements are the really elemental forces that create creation. So the elemental forces also create through what we then call devas and elementals, all one big creation team. So our energy is created through in this world through our consciousness. And our consciousness consists of our thoughts, whether it is lower mind or higher mind, then our feeling nature, and also what we call our emotional nature, quite different things, feeling nature, emotional nature. Because, for example, love is a state of being. It is not an emotion. And so then our consciousness also is expressed through our words, through our actions, right? So all of that creates who we then are reflected in the mirror. We are reflected not as the body. The body has very little to do with who we are, actually. You can think of it as really, we call it a vessel, an avatar, an instrument. It's something we shapeshift from. I remember myself in so many different bodies, you know. And I always say, you know, I was so often here on this planet as a very big man like kind of polynesian you know and many different embodiments but you know again it's the same being in a different body so you could you know we cannot judge anything by the body itself it's just what serves us in this lifetime so when we look 360 degrees around that's our life the relationships the conditions the experiences all of it and it all is always created through energy, which always is also patterns and light. For example, shape-shifting is an amazing skill to practice every day. If we are in the habit of being a certain way, and it is not the highest possible expression of our being, we have some room to shape-shift into more, and actually even then more, and then even more, because once we become all kind of coherent which means we really are filled with the god essence the milky substance we can fill up more and not out of greed but out of this divine will for all beings to contain as much as possible and ever more of divine essence at that point we would say we become enlightened enlightenment is simply to me from these experiences that we have here it is a state in which the self of the old person is dissolved by the light of God that comes in and fulfills us completely. It happens in stages. Eventually, we become fully, fully what is called liberated. It is the liberation from complete liberation from the illusion, from the self. It is the filling up with light, milky substance, where then we are just one with the mind of God at all times one with the love of God at all times. And it's just, you know, you become a unique expression of divine light and love. 
Uh, yes, 24 seven, exactly. And so I say I'm patient with my divine self because, you know, now and again, we have these huge experiences and then we simply settle down a little bit, but we are transformed. And then the next wave comes. It happens in waves, you know, Yogananda was fully liberated, of course. And so that's the kind of master being. And it's okay, you know, it's okay to be totally okay with who we are right now, right here, because the biggest illusion is if we are not okay with it. If we are not okay with it, we have resistance. And if we are resisting something, we are not in the flow of the mother. And so she showed me several things. Once again, I'm going to review that. She is the magnetic coil around us. The more we love, the more she loves us back. And I know it sounds strange, but she always loves us. The only thing is that because she's a reflection, the world shows you more and more and more and more love when you give it your love. When you are all love in being, simply Christ being, Christ consciousness, fully, fully, fully in love, filled with God essence. Again, it doesn't matter how you get there. Then the world reflects back to you with a little delay. It's also important to know there is a delay. And that delay, be patient with all things. Be like a Taoist master. Surrender completely your will to divine will and know all is well. The delay, it's okay. Everything's okay. And so when we are surrounded by the coil of magnetism, she is energy. She is life force and she builds up around us. And again, we're going to do now a little bit of Qigong practice. She builds around you. She builds and builds and builds and builds her magnetic presence around you like a coil. And then when you are magnetic enough, that is the breakthrough experience of you drawing to yourself from the field of miracles, the quantum field, those experiences that your love desired. Again, we have to make a big difference between selfish desire and what love would desire, what love would desire for you, for the world, really, right? So again, that's how it works. It has to build up. She showed me it must build up in presence. What would love do? What would love pull from the miracle field of infinite possibilities, you know? And so constantly be in your miracle mind. Now I feel, and tell me if that's true or not, that we should do like a masterclass just so that we all get together like we do now and that everyone is just focusing on drawing from the field, from the miracle field so that we master this. So that we get really good at this. Because this is big. This is the new way of being. Okay, we'll do it. Um, we want everyone to know this. All this has no trademark. Share it with everyone. Teach it everywhere. Give it to everyone. That's Divine Mother, you know. She doesn't put trademark on things. She just gives everything to everyone. And so become a teacher, show the way to others, lift everyone up. She will reward you more than you can imagine. Yes, she just wants to spill into all things without the boundaries that humanity actually impose in this world, including, you know, certain spiritualities that became just, you know, you have to be very rich to afford certain things, right? And that's just another thing. but. Aside from that, teach it freely. So when she builds up around you, give her time to build up. Do some practices for her to make you so magnetic and think of yourself as a walking magnet. When you look 360 degrees around yourself, you look at maybe some things that might not be all that, let's call it coherent. So never despair. The power is always within you, and it is the power of magnetism. Cleaning up sometimes takes, we call it time, but it also can be instantaneous depending on our divine confidence. If our divine confidence in our commanding power is great, it can be instantaneous. If our divine confidence is still learning mastery, it might take some time. 
but we want to clean up our field and we can do it through the practices that we know as the violet light, which is also what the Qigong masters uh, work with, calling in the violet light constantly and all the time, surrounding yourself, bathing yourself in the violet light. And for example, Mantak Chia said that the violet light is in all of cosmos. We just have to program it. So keep programming the violet light to assist you in cleaning up the energy field. And if you find distortions, again, do not despair. No reaction is better than reaction. Zero reaction is the best reaction. And so you simply bring in more perfect patterns that you feel would serve you and your presence. And then you look in the mirror and you just allow the mirror to reflect back to you with a certain delay. Don't worry about the delay. It's pretty fun. It's just fun, you know, and you might start having dreams. And in those dreams, you might see the result of your new reality. It first starts in these kind of finer realities. And then it settles down here into this physical reality. And so I'm going to stop recording and stop sharing. And we will do little Qigong practice that I really find magical.